passion for helping people improve their health and wellness can be a rewarding and exciting career. Join business coach and startup wellness entrepreneur Katie Wyatt. Listen in as she explores how industry leaders have built successful and passionate-fueled wellness businesses. Get action tips, inspiration, and a peek behind the scenes of today's flourishing health and wellness industry. There's been no better time to turn your passion for health and wellness into a thriving business that changes lives, including yours. Hey, wellness bosses. I hope you are keeping the green smoothies up and staying cruisy. It's really awesome to have you here today. I just want you to know that I don't take any one of your ears for granted. I really do appreciate the time that you show up and spend with me on the podcast and especially when you reach out and let me know. But I know there's lots of you that don't reach out, that you're just quietly listening and enjoying the podcast and you mean the world to me. Thank you. Before we kick into this mammoth and awesome episode with Denise Duffield Thomas, hashtag name drop, I wanted to tell you about my podcasting course, Podwell, whose doors close on Wednesday night. Yes, that is tomorrow. If you follow me at all, you will already have heard my reflections on what creating a podcast has done for my business and taught me about life and business. If you missed it, I covered the lot in episode 37. It's no secret that a podcast has been transformative for my business and it's why I'm so earnest about sharing this with other entrepreneurs because I know how it feels to feel lost in the crowd and to feel like you don't have a tribe or an audience but to know deep down inside that you are meant for great things that you can have an impact and that you can leave a legacy on the world if only it could all come together in your online business. And podcasting can be a platform to make a real dent in those challenges, a really big dent. Can I tell you a little bit about it? I promise I won't take long. Basically, you will learn to plan, strategize, produce, publish, launch and grow a podcast that grows your business. And that's the important bit. Podcasting can be art, beautiful art, but I'm not about creating art for art's sake. Well, not on biz time anyway. And we do this in eight weeks and we start on February 22. So you'll get eight weekly emails with videos and audio training and pod sheets to guide your um, planning. And there are a heap of bonuses which are worth the price of entry alone, like seriously. We've got masterclasses, content strategy, group training calls, voice training with the most amazing voice coach. She's my voice coach and I just adore her. She's she's the type of person that just sends chills down your spine. The content trainer is currently has been helping me with my content and I just know that it's making the biggest, biggest difference to my strategy and my reach. I've got mindset mastery training, tech training, you name it, we're doing it. Canva training, I forgot the Canva training. And so it's $595 Australian and I really struggled with pricing Podwell and I want to be really honest here I don't want to be the cheapest thing on the market because no one wants to be the cheapest thing on the market right because you're just going to attract people that don't really value what you do but every other product that I'm aware of that teaches what I teach in my course or similar to what I teach in my course is at least $300 more expensive than mine and usually it's actually thousands of dollars more And that's not my thing. My target market, I definitely have entrepreneurs who I work with who are, you know, really kicking goals years into their business and ready to scale. But I also work with new entrepreneurs breaking into a new career like I was a year ago. And so I want Podwell to be affordable enough that you can do it, but not so cheap that you don't value it and commit to it. Because a podcast takes commitment like anything else you do in your business. If you're ready and you want to join the February class, I would love 
to welcome you through the doors. It's $595 Australian and the cart closes tomorrow night. You can read all about it at bit.ly forward slash podwell. Will you be amplifying your brand in 2016? I seriously hope so. Now, thank you for indulging me. And now we're just going to move straight on to Denise. Denise DT or DDT as she's commonly known. Does she need an introduction? Possibly not. But let me just say money blocks, money blocks, money blocks. When I started out in business, I was like, money what? I earn six figures in corporate, dude. I've got no money blocks. Oh, and D, DT and I have a really good laugh about the naivety of ourselves as new entrepreneurs. Because, and even she says that a new entrepreneur doesn't really know anything about money blocks because they come out and rear their head when you are, you know, on your way into your business. So Denise is seriously the girlfriend that you wish you could have Friday night vino with. She's real, she's honest, she's super generous. And that is, you know, how awesome is that? You just want to hear it. I know. Let's do it. Welcome to the podcast, Denise. It's so lovely to have you. Hi, Katie. It's great to be here. I love chatting with Australians and with people with amazing communities. So thank you so much. Awesome. Yes, two Australian accents on a podcast. How often does that yeah. happen? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, so look, I'm really excited to talk to you about lots of things, but particularly about money blocks. Um, and when I started in my business, which wasn't that long ago, it's in the last 12 months, I was a bit like, what's a money block? I don't have money blocks. I just need to know how to run a business. And it was only when I got a little further down that road that I actually realized how big a thing it could be and so I'm wondering if you def if you find that similar to other stories of people that you work with does it take a little time for people entrepreneurs particularly to realize that money blocks actually can creep up once you've started absolutely and I think that's kind of my job in a way is to um, help people realize that everybody has them that they exist and make it just part of the conversation around being in business because the problem with women, and this is what we do because we like to make up stories, we're very creative, so as soon as things don't go our way in business or as soon as things feel a little hard, instead of thinking, oh, well, it's a money block that I have to work with, we start to internalise it. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not meant to be in business. Maybe this is too hard. Maybe I should get a job. Maybe people don't like my stuff. Maybe I'm not you know, smart or ambitious enough. And that's the tricky thing because as soon as you get into that spiral, like the death spiral, then, you know, that's when people start to sabotage themselves. They get resistant. They can't get through it. They quit their businesses and it's, it's really sad. So um, I think it's really common <laughs> what mm. you just said and what you, you experienced that you knew something was wrong but you didn't know what it was. So you probably turned it back on yourself and thought, well, I'm the problem, it's me. Mm, I totally turned it back on myself and I see a lot of what you're talking about and I guess what I'm wondering is if people don't sort of realise this stuff until they're kind of in that spiral, how do you buy the time to keep going in your business while you're working on those money blocks? Well, actually, that's the. it's not that hard because... If it was something else, and this is the thing, we go, maybe it's a strategy mm. that they don't know, or maybe it's a silver bullet. And you go out seeking externally for all of those things. And really, the stuff with the money blocks is you can work on it internally. It doesn't take long to shift. It also doesn't take long just to get out of your own way. And, I mean, someone asked me yesterday, she said, do you still have money blocks? And I was like, yes, I work on my money blocks all the time because – they constantly come up in, in different ways, but I managed to create a very successful business while working on my money blocks and continuing to work on my money blocks. And I think sometimes we think that the absence of fear or the absence of money blocks is the goal, and it's not. It's impossible. <laughs> what really is the goal is to, to have the confidence in yourself and the tools and skills to get out of those things when they come up and to know how to quickly 
work through them while you continue to work on your business. And actually, that's the whole point is when you don't have awareness of what you're doing and around the money blocks, a lot of people just stop. They go, well, Mm. I'm not going to market. Um, I just had a big success. I'm not going to do anything else. And things stop. Whereas when you have the tools and awareness to be able to do with them, things don't stop. It's business as usual, but you're just you working through the stuff because you go, oh, I know what that is. Okay, well, I, I, know, I, I know I can deal with this. Let's, let's continue. Mm, that's such a big thing, um, a big realisation I've had this year, I think, is that whole, like, consistency. Like, you know, usually we talk about consistency with, say, content creation, but I think consistency in working on yourself is just as important because it's usually we start when things are hard and then when things start to improve we kind of stop again yes exactly well one thing I've seen too is that women who have a big success their money blocks hit them then and it's like sometimes you think oh money blocks only hit me when I'm down actually a lot of women have a big success and then they start to go that was a fluke I'll never do that again I'll never make this kind of money again. I'll never follow this up. I'll disappoint people. And they stop actually after the success, which is really weird. Mm. And it's not weird because I've done it myself. (laughs) (laughs) The good old upper limit stuff. (laughs) Exactly. I remember I had a really successful month in business and been the most money I'd ever made in business. Things were growing great. And straight after that, I just got into such a tizzy in myself of like, this is never going to happen again. It's such a fluke. I'm such a fraud. I think I sat and played Candy Crush for three weeks straight. And the difference now, of course, I still get those feelings of, oh, I'm a fraud, you know, whatever. The numbers are bigger, but also I can get out of them much quicker. It might be that I sit and play Candy Crush or Words with Friends for three hours, not three weeks. And then I go, oh, wow, I remember this place. Okay, cool, we can move on. (laughs) I love it, Candy Crush. Um, And so do you have particular go-to tools Um, that you recommend for people to actually get in touch with is this actually a money block that I'm experiencing so I imagine you're just really good at recognizing those things now Um, I'm I think I'm better than I ever have been I wouldn't say I'm perfect and and I say these things all the time because I want people to realize that perfection isn't the goal you're never going to get to a place where you need to be perfect And people think because I teach money blocks that I am perfect with money all the time and I'm absolutely not. But yeah, I do have go-to tools that I, that I use and a couple of them are emotional freedom technique, EFT. Mm -hmm. That's a brilliant one. Otherwise known as tapping. That's a brilliant one. I think to stop thoughts in their tracks, stop the, um, stop the pattern of, you know, spiraling repetitive negative thoughts. Um, And that's what I think all of these things are too. When people go, well, I don't think I believe in EFT. And I said, well, it's a pattern interrupter. Mm. If nothing else, if all you do is wear an elastic band on your wrist and you snap it whenever you have a negative thought, that's a pattern interrupter as well. And emotional freedom technique, I think, is is a brilliant pattern interrupter. Um, Another thing is, I know this sounds kind of like, oh, okay, but it's, it's just having the awareness to speak it out loud. And I think sometimes it's really important then to have people in your life that you can speak these things out loud to. For example, a community of women. So my Lucky Bitch Money Boot Camp, we have a very active Facebook group. And that is one of those safe spaces where people can go, hey, guys, I just did this thing and I know exactly why I'm doing it. And, and I think sometimes just saying it out loud, acknowledging it is such a powerful thing to realize that it has no power of you and it's just a story. If you keep it all in t- inside, that's when things can kind of spiral and you start to think, well, no, this is actually is real. You know, this, this is real this time. Um, so whether that's a mastermind, a community like my money, um, my money bootcamp community, just to have somebody to say, oh, my God, I'm doing it again. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's so powerful. And then for other tools, I actually believe that everything kind of works a little bit, you know. So whatever your favorite thing is to change your mindset, whether it's, you know, a pattern interrupter, um, to change your languaging, whether it's affirmations or um, mantras or whatever, all of that stuff really helps because all you're doing is just stopping things in its tracks and choosing a different thought. So that's why I think my philosophy is always throw everything at it, you know, Mm. and people go, how many times should I tap on each tapping point on EFT? And I said, oh, my gosh, look, just just do it. You know, you can analyze it to death. <laughs> um, you know, how should I write my goals out every day? What's the perfect way? And I'm like, 
oh my gosh, you know what? The, the perfect way is to actually do it. That's the only secret. Mm. The way you do it, there's a lot of interpretations. But you just if you sit and analyze it, then you're not going to get the benefit, which is the pattern interruption. Yeah, interruption. Mm, I love it. And so I, a lot of the people that listen to this podcast are service-based wellness entrepreneurs. And a lot of them I know are transitioning from the regular nine to five that they've probably been doing for 10 or 12 years into their own business, which is much more about them and about their wellness passion. So what are some of the major blocks you see particularly come up for this type of entrepreneur and what would you suggest for identifying them? I think wellness entrepreneurs, um, it's a very particular type of money block that I see again and again. And that is um, I shouldn't charge for this. It should be free to everyone. Mm. Good health is everyone's birthright, which it 100% is everyone's birthright. But I think then... Um, wellness entrepreneurs interpret that to being I should be free or very very cheap for anyone who wants to work with me and there's a lot of guilt associated because of people's health you know Mm. and you want people to be healthy so you think well I have to work with anyone and everyone because they deserve good health and and the problem with that because it is true so you think well you know I'm being a good person here (laughs) you know you can very easily justify it Um, But the problem is you can only work with so many people in that kind of model. If you're cheap or even free, chances are you're not going to be able to quit your job. Mm. Um, A lot of people have to go back into their job because they can't afford to essentially bankroll their hobby, which is helping people with their health for free or or Mm. cheap, Um, which doesn't serve anybody, you going back into your job. It doesn't serve anyone for you to only be able to work with only a a small stable of clients and be burnt out by that you know especially if you're the sort of person who over delivers with their clients and I've seen this so many times where people go they've paid for a one-hour session but I felt really bad and I gave them two hours Mm. and the problem with that again you think well I'm just helping people so you can kind of justify it but the problem with that is that sometimes then people don't come back and see you because they think well I'm full I've got everything I need in that two hours I'm going to go away and do it by myself And you're not really giving the people the opportunity to have long-lasting transformation with you, working with you over a long period of time to get that, you know, that true change. Um, So you're doing people a disservice by over-delivering and not allowing them to invest with you in the longer term. But also when you're burning yourself out, working with such a, you know, small amount of clients um, and over-delivering and you know, all that kind of stuff. One, you're burning yourself out and lots of health coaches, and you see this all the time probably, Katie, uh, are really neglecting their own health and well-being. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're not walking their talk because they're just like, I'm so burnt out and resentful and, I, you know, helping all these people and no one appreciates it and I'm broke. Um, but also when, when I see health coaches really step into their power both as a leader and a businesswoman, um, it's when they have the time and space to create a lot of things for their audience. And if you're charging appropriately for what you do and you have good boundary with your, boundaries with your clients, you should have some creative freedom there to go, you know what, I'm going to write a book. Mm. And then everybody who wants to work with me can work with me for $10. You know, they can buy my book and that's a really good intro. I can work on my blog. I can do a weekly blog post. And then anybody who wants to work with me and who doesn't have any money can read all of this information that I put out for free. I can do podcasts like this. And I mean, Katie, this doesn't happen by accident, right? There's mm. a lot of work and energy. <laughs> in it. And you can't do that if you're super burnt out. You can't serve people in a bigger way if you were burnt out yourself. So that's where I think it's the paradox of, um, of health coaches that so many people, they want to help people so much mm. that they actually can't help that many people (laughs) yeah whereas when they really fill their own well they charge appropriately they have good boundaries you have so much more creative freedom than to create things that then you can help a lot more people and it nourishes you rather than depletes you Mm. yeah I totally agree with that and I think where people get stuck especially when they're in that early stage is that you know it's just that thought that will if no, no one will buy from me. So I love, you know, I can leave that philosophy, but what if no one buys? But I think sometimes that comes down to you might be talking to the wrong person. It does. And you might be surprised too to hear that sometimes when people are too cheap, it really does um, 
uh, repels their ideal clients, mm. you know, because people start to make up stories about it and they go, well, maybe she's not that good, you know, well, she's not in that much demand, you know, and the people want to go to someone who seems to know what they're doing. And, and that's one of the indicators for people is price often, you know, and if you've got to think for yourself too, it's like if you've got a health problem and you've got the money to deal with it, are you going to go see someone who charges $10 an hour? No, because price isn't your primary motivation there. You're looking for someone who knows what they're doing. And and I know it sounds really weird, but price is one of those things that people make a decision on, not just, you know, who's the cheapest. Lots of people do that. So, yes, yeah, sometimes it's definitely a client um, a client thing. You're chasing after the wrong clients or you're trying to be everything to everyone. Mm. And people want to see experts in their problem. And if you're just like, yeah, whatever problem you've got, come to me. And that's the exact thing that I did when I started out as a life coach. I was like, whatever your problem is, come and see Denise. And and actually that was my life before that anyway. I was the go-to person for everyone, for mm. all my friends and family, for anything. And when I started just saying, no, nope, I only work with female entrepreneurs, that's when um, clients started to flow to me because they were like, oh, Denise, she works with female entrepreneurs. And guess what people come to me now for? Mm. <laughs> Money. <laughs> and that doesn't happen by accident. That is how you do your marketing. That's what you talk about. So if there are things in your practice that you don't want to talk about anymore, stop talking about them, you know, mm. and just go all in in who you're trying to serve. And, and you know, and yes, sometimes it is a marketing thing when you don't have any clients. Maybe you're not, um, you're not putting yourself out there enough. And I often do this too when someone goes, I don't have any clients. And I go, great, how many blog posts have you done this month? And they go, none. And I go, cool, how many periscopes have you done? How many Facebook posts have you done? And they're like, oh, like two or three. And it's like, well, dude, it doesn't happen by magic. You know, mm. people need to see you and know about what you do. And then you have to make offers. And that's another um, mistake that a lot of people do. When they start to do their marketing and they start to give out things, they don't make any offers in return. And so if you put out a blog post and all you have to offer right now, you don't have a book, you don't have a course, at the end of every blog post, you go, click here for how to work with me. Mm. You know, you want someone to help you with that, I can help you click here. Give people, you know, the, the knowledge of where to go. And that's exactly what I did when I had my life coaching practice when I was just starting out like everyone else, you know, no list, no, you know, no reputation. It was every single blog post, here's how to work with me. Mm. And that's, that's how you start. Yeah, I think it's so true. And because it's such a marathon strategy, like it doesn't necessarily have results instantly. I think people lose um, that kind of momentum. And something I've been reflecting on a lot because I've been podcasting for a year now is it took months before I even got an email from somebody to say they'd listened to the podcast. And yeah. that's so easy to give up in that moment but now when I look back at all the amazing things that have come from having a podcast like it doesn't happen overnight but it does happen and most people don't commit <laughs> exactly it's the Pantene, it's the Pantene commercial. <laughs> exactly. it happen, but it will happen <sighs> but that's so true but that's the thing Katie so many people give up before they get that because they do one thing and they go well it's not meant to be and that's the thing in business. It's, you know, it is meant to be if it's your destiny, but it doesn't mean it's just going to happen by accident just yeah. because it's your destiny. Mm. And I wanted to ask as well, because you talked about that, you know, I mean, obviously when people look at your business, they go, oh, well, what a, you know, what a gold move that Denise focused in on money. Look how well it's done. And I know that, you know, at the beginning when you don't know and you're trying lots of different things, like, do you remember that? moment of thinking no I'm just going to stay on one thing and was it really clear for you what that one thing was or did it feel like a lot of us feel I think where you think oh I'm going to have a go but I don't know if it's going to work uh it's a that's a really great question and it, it was a particular moment so as I said you know I started out as a generic life coach but that was not my first business I have um I remember my first like info product that I did in 2003, it was internet dating tips for men, <laughs> got internet dating tips for men. And then I did a movie review blog and then I did a health and wellness blog called the Green Detox Queen. And then I did a, um, a wedding blog called Raw Brides. 
and I knew I wanted to be a life coach. I was just really scared of even putting my hat on that. Mm. And I think it was because I was thinking, that's not a real job, Denise. You know, that was the thing that kept on coming up in my mind. You know, that's not a real job. And I think even with wellness coaches, you probably get people sometimes going, well, what's a wellness coach? Mm -hmm. You know, and I was so terrified of people saying to me, well, why are you a life coach? Aren't you a bit too young for that? And actually one of the first people um, when we moved back to Australia our landlord, he goes, well, what are you doing? I said, I'm a life coach. He goes, aren't you a bit young to be a life coach? <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. I went, the worst thing just happened and it wasn't that bad. Um, <laughs> so I did that for a couple of years. And I, at the same time, I was working on my own money mindset because I faced the same things that you talked about, Katie, where, you know, I would feel like, what's wrong? Like, how can, why am I procrastinating on this? There's got to be more to it. So behind the scenes, when I was working with my life coaching clients, I was working on my money blocks and I was, um, you know, developing in my mind all that, all that languaging. So, of course, I started teaching it to some of my clients. Um, and there was a real moment where I felt a huge calling to do that in a bigger mm. way. And, and I rejected the calling. You know, I just, I said, no, like, universe, this is not my thing. Like, this is not my job. Send it to someone else. And it just kept on just being like, no, you've got something to say here. And I think the reason why a lot of people do reject a calling to, to go into one particular thing is because you think you have to be the Oprah of that topic or mm. nothing. Mm. And I was like, well, I'm not Susie Orman. I can't, t I can't talk about money. Um, I can't talk about money. I've got, you know, Lucky Bitch is my brand. You, you know, you can't talk about money and talk about being a bitch. It doesn't. It doesn't work. It's like, oh, I'm a woman. I'm a straight. Like, I had all these BS excuses. And I just said, oh, my God, universe, send it to someone else. And it just kept on coming up, right? And so I said, okay, universe. And this is a good tip too. I said, I'm willing to do this if you help me and show me the way. And, you know, and show me the signs that this is where I'm, where I'm meant to do. And then I'm all in. But you have to help me. I'm not doing this by myself. And, um, and, you know, it has, I wouldn't say it's been completely smooth sailing, but I, I made the right decision. And because I gave myself permission to not have to be the expert, and that's the thing, if you peg your hat on something in the health and wellness world, you know, just, just say that I'm so passionate about this topic that I'm okay to be part of the conversation. I'm not putting pressure on myself to be the only expert in this field or nothing. I'm contributing to the conversation. Mm. I love that. And I, oh, yeah, that's got so many things to it. And I totally agree with that. So I really want to just ask um, one more question about money. And then I've got one kind of question about the way you run your business. But um, yeah. so a lot of people this time of year, I think as well, um, people are kind of looking ahead to next year and they're thinking about maybe raising their prices. And I'm just really interested in your perspective on how you manage something like that. Yes, absolutely. And I've actually got a, a pricing course on exactly this, um, which Katie, I'm sure you can put the link, yeah, link in there for it. And it's um, luckybitch.com slash pricing. But it's um, it's one of those things I don't think people need to necessarily wait for a milestone. And, and if everyone's putting their prices up in January, you know, maybe you can be somewhere, someone different. And in my first um, year of being a life coach, I put my prices up every three months. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that you, a lot of people don't know where to start with pricing. You know, you think, what is everyone else charging? I'll just kind of average that out. And the problem with that is that, um, you know, you don't know what money blocks that those people have. You don't know what, how they second guess themselves to create that price. So, you know, you have to come up with a price that resonates with you. And I, I go through that in the pricing course. But, um, then you can increase it whenever you like and you can increase it when you're getting too busy, which happens, you know, if your mm. pricing's not quite right, you can get booked out very quickly. And I don't mean by booked out like every single hour of every single day that is available in the world um, because we've all got our own threshold. For me, mm. 15 clients a week was my total threshold. Um, I've heard from people who can do 40 clients a week. Wow. Um, my, my naturopath, she could do, she sees a thousand people a year and I'm like, Holy crap. Um, so when you've reached your own personal threshold, uh, then increase your prices because you will drop a few clients, um, but you'll be making more, you'll be working less. And you can, you can really, it's a great way to, you know, filter out your non-ideal clients for sure. And um, sometimes you can increase your prices as a marketing strategy to get people to work with you who have been on the fence for a long time. 
Mm. You know, it's like, well, you can book in with me now because my price is going up in, in a month's time. And it gives people that incentive without discounting. See, it's a different, it's a completely different thing. People think, I have to discount to incentivize people to book with me. No, raise your prices and give them <laughs> notice. That's a really good incentive to work with you. Also, the thing is too when people go, oh, well, I don't like how in, um, you might, you know, as a wellness professional, you might be looking at, say, the internet marketing industry and go, well, you know, those people just increase their prices all the time for no reason. And the thing is you will become better um, at, re- at retrieving, achieving results for your clients. You will become quicker at diagnosing what's going on with them. So you'll be able to use that expertise in ways that solve their problems much quicker, um, you know, much less painful, all that kind of stuff. That's when you know you can increase your prices because you're getting better and better at what you do and you're getting the results quicker and faster for people, um, which saves them time, money, and it saves them their health. You know, so it's. The, I don't think people need to stress about it too much and think it only has to happen once a year or... Um, you know, you really have to justify it to your clients. It, it's it's pretty simple and it's your business, your rules. You can increase your prices whenever you like. Mm, I like that. And I that the every quarter, I think some, I've heard someone else say that before. It's probably a lucky bee. Um, and I think that that's got, I really like that idea because you're right, you get better and better the more you work in your own business. So why shouldn't you? Because you're probably adding a heap more value um, so my last question for you is actually just about your daily process or the rituals in your day that are kind of non-negotiable for you when it comes to, um, you know, whether it's business success or life success. What are the things that always happen on Denise's day? Well, I would love to tell you that I get up and go and do yoga and meditate and all that kind of stuff. But <laughs> I have a toddler. I have a toddler and I'm pregnant. So it's like oh, wow. all that stuff kind of goes out the window. Um, I think for me, I, I do EFT pretty much every day, but it's not like it's I sit down and, you know, like light a candle and make it a total ritual. I do it throughout the day. I do it very casually. Um and, you know, I just do it as and when I need it, whenever I'm feeling a little bit anxious or worried about something. And I might not go through all of the tapping points. I might just tap on one point, maybe on my hand or something like that. So I think that's something that really gets me through, um, you know, my life <laughs> is the EMT. Um, and then something that I've done recently is I've got a, f- a meal delivery service that comes because I used to be really terrible at feeding myself regularly. I'm sure mm-hmm. a lot of people listening can relate to this. And so that's a non-negotiable for me. It's like you have to, I have to be fed. And I think we can get into a point too, and probably people listening can relate to this, you think you're giving so much to other people and then you're not, you're not nourishing yourself. Literally, you're not nourishing yourself. Mm. Um, and I would sit and, you know, like just sit in my office and I'd be thirsty mm. and I'd need to pee and I'm like, no, I'll just work another half an hour. <laughs> And it's like, go get a drink of water, you know, go pee. <laughs> it's fine. So I think my non-negotiables are just listening to my body a little bit more. I'm definitely not perfect on it at all. But, you know, a few things like that, like getting a meal delivery service means that the food is there for mm. me. Um, and, you know, I get up and, and get water all day long. So things like that really help. Yeah, I love that. I did a juice um, detox at the at about a week ago and I had all the juices delivered and I felt so indulgent doing it but I was amazed at how much extra time I had so I didn't have to worry about you know getting a nice meal together it was so good I love that thank you so much Denise it's been awesome having you on the wellness entrepreneur so how can people get in touch with you well I'm simply at luckybitch.com and um, if you sign up for my newsletter every week I send out tips about business and money and how you can overcome some of those tricky things that we all go through and you know there's there's always something fun in there there's always something easy to implement I think you know the thing that I just want to leave people with is you don't have to be perfect I know I say this a lot um, it, it can be very very easy and if you get into the lucky bee world you'll you'll realize that there are a community of women just like you all around the world you know trying to make a difference in other people's lives and 
um, and you, you know you're you're worth making money out of that too. You're worth making a really good living from what you do. I serve, I deserve is the is the mantra to leave you with. I think. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Have a gorgeous day, and thanks for coming on. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Superb. Totally superb. Tell me I'm wrong. Make sure you let Denise know that you heard her on the Wellness Entrepreneur podcast if you loved it as much as I loved interviewing Denise. Denise is on Twitter and her handle is Denise DT. Easy, easy. And mine is Katie T. Wyatt. So I'd love to hear from you over there if you enjoyed this episode. Otherwise, have the most amazing week and I will see you in two of them. Mm -hmm.